and uh, welcome back to the next episode and podcast or vlogcast. Or Marty, you're you're the uh, you're the technical guy here. So what what are we what are we doing? Is this a podcast or a vlogcast or what is this? This is a hug in. We are here to hug. Here to hug. So once again, I'm Rafi Salem. I am here with my friend and professor and mentor and doctor and a lot of other things, Marty Katz. And today as a special guest, really super special, someone I've known, I think for over 20 years, Ramon. I, I really think so. Ramon Ray of Smart Hustle Media and a number of other organizations. Ramon, please say hello. Hey, thanks for having me here. It's good to be with you all. Uh, some gentlemen who are insightful and funny at the same time. So it's great to Thank be you here. So Thank much. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Marty is a lot funnier than I am. I, I, I don't even compare to his humor. Well, I mean, I have been invited by NPR to, to, to uh, feature my comedy on their show. Thank you, Marty. But Ramon, what you don't know is that um, when, uh, when Carl Reiner passed away uh, just last month, I think it was, uh, M Marty and I were talking about how Marty and I were actually the original 2000 year old man interview. And I think that was our most widely recognized social media post. So we try to, uh, try to throw some humor in and some serious stuff in, but let's talk, let's talk first about introductions. Ramon, I am so impressed. Yeah, I met you 20 years ago, and yes, we were in the same marketing space and during the Ninma days, if you recall, mm -hmm. New York. Yes, days. yes. Uh, and you know, we were all hustling. We were all hustling back in the 90s because we had no idea what was going to. We had the vision that this internet thing was going to come off, was right. going to take off. But 20 years later, 23 years later since I started my company. I want everyone to know that's watching this. Ramon has, if, if anyone was equal to Ramon, if anyone was equal, he just catapulted above you, in my uh, professional opinion. Because, just thank you. <laughs> because he just put on these two incredible summits called the, is it Thrive and Survive or Survive and Thrive? What comes first? Survive and Thrive, uh huh? Survive and Thrive. Uh, these summits, Five hours, Ramon. You, you got Dell as a corporate sponsor. You got a number of other organizations to sponsor these. Basically, when we say giving back to the community, you take it to to the heights. You take it right up there. So, Ramon, please introduce yourself. How did you get started? A little introduction. And then how did you end up with these, with these summits, which I thought were over the top amazing? Sure, no, thank you very much, Rafi. I think, I think, well, part of it, I think, is just following along with good people, hanging out with smart people like you and Marty. So I think that's, that's all of it. We all do different things, different ways. But the summary of it is uh, Smart Hustle uh, inspires and educates uh, small business owners uh, to start and grow successful businesses. That's the bottom line. We're a uh, media company, uh, similar to an entrepreneur, Inc., Forbes, except we're much smaller, just a team of uh, about six people or so. Um, and through that, we produce events, online events, like you were kind enough to be there, uh, the Survive and Thrive Summit, and, and many others that you've seen in person as well. Uh, we produce content online. So our whole mission and purpose is, is sharing, hence I'm glad to be here with, with you, Marty, and you, uh, Raph, is, is to uh, educate your audience and, and really inspire them. I think uh, that's our really one thing we do well. There's a lot of content out there. We're doing content today. Uh, but really today, Ramona and Smart Hustle uh, has a community of small business owners. We work with brands to help uh, provide them credibility and authenticity. Uh, and that's what I think we do better, best if that came off clear. I'm also, as you know, uh, Rafa, a speaker, writer, event producer, uh, author of several books. But the main thing we do is just sit behind a camera and bring people together in the community. All right. So Marty, why don't you, why don't you take it away uh, with your business development, uh, education, and mentorship? So Thank you so much for passing the baton. <laughs> so, so today, as always, we're going to be talking about business development. And business development is defined as the development of long-term relationships between enterprises, organizations, individuals that lead to mutual benefit over time. Uh, and it's, it's, it's the way that two, two different organizations can uh, pool their resources, ideas, 
uh, and backgrounds so that each of them gain. Uh, and a way to think about this is, as you, Ramon, talked about, it's like a, it's like a JV arrangement. And so that's what this is about. And so in, in business, many people think uh, of sales and they think of networking and they think of what I do, branding. Uh, and that all of these are great disciplines, but they're really different than business development. And the reason that we talk about this is that business development is a great way to promote and to sell two different organizations, products and services simultaneously. The sum is greater than the whole of the parts. So that's what we're here to talk about is that is, is what you see in the, in the business world of successes, perhaps, and maybe some near misses of, of business development, and how you see that, uh, how it benefits both of the parties. And you're a good example of this since you've done a lot of work in the business world. So that's what we want to talk about today. Sure, happy to. I mean, I think one thing I can mention, but I'm happy to, you know, I'll pause a lot because I'd love to hear your input, uh, Marty. You're the guru of this and Rafs as well. Uh, but I think two things that come to mind for me very briefly is, for example, my events. Um, and I see this similar. I was telling my team uh, as Apple or Google, whatever big company it is, and BoxCon. Um, you know, they, they produce the, the widget, they have the design, the, the thought behind it, they're marketing it. But BoxCon is very uh, uh, much part of it. So if I'm wrong on that, the exact way you define it, Marty, let me give me some latitude here. But my point being is that I produce events. Does that mean though I have to own the full stack of what it takes to do an event? No, I have the vision, I have the idea, I sell it, but I have a, relatively speaking, a partner as it were, but she has her own business, own entity. And it's not quite JV, Marty, the purest sense, but after our pre-talk, Marty, it got me thinking that this is kind of JV-ish because our numbers are open. Uh, you know, we, we kind of, we support each other like, oh, Ramon, you didn't get this. You know what? Don't worry about it. That attitude of mutual support and same with her. I support a lot of things. So I think that's one way. Guess what I'm trying to say in a better way is that as business owners, you don't always have to do all the work. If you have this great joint venture, this great business development relationship, other people can help you do more things than you could by yourself. And I'll say one other thing that happened is working with a, um, uh, I'll just say I worked with Google on a project uh, in full disclosure and one particular project I work with, money didn't pass hands, mm. but they needed something I had. Can you imagine? Google needed wow. me and I'm like, wow. And I needed something they had. So money didn't pass hands, but I gave them something that they wanted and they gave me something that I wanted in a pretty big way. We both were happy. So again, not the purest form of JV. And Marty, I'd love to hear a better version of that, but that's kind of-ish some ways I work. One is I can pay you to do something, just it's transactional. But the other way is, hey, Raf and me, let's sit down and see, huh, I'm doing something and I need a hundred logos or websites, whatever. Let's work together and see how we can do that or Marty. So is that helpful, Marty? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, can you elaborate more on this Google uh, business development venture? Can you provide us some, some more details about it? Sure. Yeah, and, and I would use, use a different example, if I may, if I may. So um, using a different example of that, which how it could be, is uh, there's many big, big, big brands. And many people are wondering, how do I work with them? But brands need credibility, Marty and Raf. Brands need authenticity. Brands want to look good. You know, hey, we're the best for the Hispanic market. We're the best for women. Or we're the best for small business or whatever. Marty said it was. Look at the, the, the thing he gave us. So even though we're small businesses, let's take a company, let's take another company, Dell. They may say, well, Marty, you know what? We don't have a budget for that, but you're going to make us be the feet, you know, you're going to, you know, you're going to give us the biz dev award. Yeah, we can send you 10 notebooks. So I don't know if that makes sense a bit, but it's not always where companies, you have to be direct transaction. It's kind of what do they really need? Even a small business we have things that the bigger brands don't have or that going back to the JV model, is that helpful? So no, I, 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 let, let me just jump in here because uh, Ramon, one of, the, one of the things that Marty talks about all the time is what is the problem that you solve or what is the problem yes. that a company solves? And it's really interesting to bring up Dill. Like what, pro Marty, this, this is directed towards you, but, but with Ramon to, to kick in. Sure. Marty, what problem does Dell solve? The problem they solve is you're talking about their about about their products. That I they mean, solve? Dell. That that's the thing. Dell is a huge billion dollar corporation. So you know, when when we talk about the problem that they solve, well, 
Yeah. Do you break it down by product? Do you break it down by service? And then why would Dell want to sponsor a, a project that Ramona's working on? Well, I can only speak. Uh, I can only speak about this theoretically, since I, I don't know any of their top management. But uh, I would say that what Dell solves the problem of of connectivity, connecting people. That's the problem that they solve, people individually, personally, as well as in business. And so I think a problem that they would have ongoingly is how do they open up new markets, whether that's geographic markets, it could be demographic. It could be small business community, any number of them. So they, they always want to have their brand have a greater footprint. So the problem they have, big companies have, is they have an established base, but in order for them to thrive, they have to find new people with whom to partner so they can reach these other, these other markets. So in another example, I'm going to get back to Dell in just a second, is Amex. Yeah, well, they were they were all over the place. They had everything, but then they came out with this some years ago with this small business initiative. I think it was called Open. Mm -hmm. So, so that was that was a problem that they had. I'm not suggesting that that was that was any way of a business development measure. That was definitely a sales measure. But these big companies all have problems like that. New products. You look at packaged goods companies. All these big companies always have new. They always have problems about how to grow. And in, in, the, in this particular uh, instance right here, Ramon, we're talking about using uh, business development as a great lever for both organizations, Correct. small and large in this particular case. And, going, and Marty, going to the Amex issue, we can, we can extrapolate that. I'm again, just spitballing here. But I think when you're talking about that, Amex, billion dollar company, started this small business push. So the problem they have is credibility, authenticity, because again, there's MasterCard, right? Uh, yeah, MasterCard, Visa, Discover, a number of different options. So I could see a biz dev, let's say women, because that's a hot issue. You know, many brands want to be known as that. Hey, listen, women's organization, you have a footprint all around. Whether money passes hands or not, we need you, we need you to validate us and say, we're great for female founders. Right. Therefore, let's work together in some way so if that if that if I'm on the right side, am I getting warm there, Marty? Is that yeah, kind of warm, definitely warmer? You yeah. know, I think you uh, certainly uh, the essence of of biz dev is not transactional immediately. It's transactional right. over time. Over time, everybody's here to make money. Period. Right. Full stop. We but, we all know that, right? Yeah, so, so 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 the way to get there could often be through an exchange of ideas or information. Right. I mean, very classically. Uh, you can have two organizations sponsoring a seminar or a webinar in this particular uh, business environment right now. Uh, or like an example I gave to you, Ramon, when we spoke last week was you have an IT company that specializes in certain compliance issues, and they, they will do a long-term relationship with a law firm. Right. So they both get business out of it. They get exposure to communities, and they get business leads out of it. So they both can actually gain in that way. And they have a number of functions and activities online and off. Uh, to gain them traction in, in their in their targeted communities, yeah, and the benefit of that, I guess, they both can do uplift is what I'm seeing. You take the IT company, right, and if they have the law firm, I think you said, is that imagine it? They both, it's kind of the IT firm doesn't have to say no to anyone, meaning they can say yes, we can yeah. help you with compliance. Right. Our partner, whatever you want to call them here, the law firm can say yes, we can do a, a hard drive forensics, making it up. So, so I think, I think these things can work. And I think as we talked in the green room, as it were before, yes, I encourage those listening. I think the more and more we can think transactions important. We want people to buy from us, but man, if, if you're, if this person doesn't buy from you and you're discounting them and not thinking, wait a minute, maybe they can't buy from us, but how, what do they need? Right. How can I serve them? And you know what, cause they have something we need. How can they serve us? We work together. That's a that's a win. What maybe kind of what you and Raff, Mark, Raff or, and Marty are doing on this, you know, exactly. sharing this insight. Well, I, let, let, let me just point out one very important thing that another thing you don't know, Ramon, uh, is that talk about the exchange of, uh, of money and, and hands. I've been doing work with Marty for for it seems like decades, but it's only been a few months. <laughs> he hasn't paid me one cent. Not one, one. Not one. And he, he, was, he was promising me blintzes from Zabar's <laughs> okay. for, for months. And finally, I put my foot down. This was like two months ago. And I'm like, Marty, Marty, you keep on making up these stories of how you're not paying me because, oh, COVID era and, and their blintz flower is out. And finally, he delivered. You know what he delivered? Pickles. He pickled cucumbers for me.
And I bet you were happy. I extremely happy. These are pickles that I pickled myself. There's organic. A, organic German recipe of a certain kind of pickle called Zimpf Gorkin. And yeah. so, in fact, all this, this business about Zabars is that, in fact, they're still not making blintzes because they can't get the flour because of the COVID situation. So, so, that, so that's exactly where I was going with this. Are you, so, where were you uh, going? <laughs> that's it. I, you, you fell right into my trap. R Ramon, obviously, the past six months have been incredibly challenging yes. to all of us, to, to anyone in business, uh, professionally, personally, et cetera, et cetera. I'm very interested in hearing from you how business development for you has changed uh, from before COVID to COVID, post-COVID. Yeah, no, I think for sure. I think for me, uh, rather than great question, I think, I think it's, it's changed. I think it's accelerated because I think that our eyes are open. Our eyes are learning to say yes more. Our eyes, I think, are learning to say when, when money is tight, right? When you can't, when the transaction doesn't work, I think it forces you, as Damon John says in his book, The Power of Broke, I think it forces you to think in new ways. So I think, you know, Raph and Marty as well, yourself, we're all decent, good people on this call. So I think decent people, we just think, how can I be more decent? How can I work more together? So I think that for me would have done things like the Survive and Thrive event. You know, it's, it, it's that caused me to, to pull all angles, even though I'm a hustler in a good way already, smart hustle, but I think that's where it pulled, you know what? Okay, they don't have a budget for this. Maybe we can do this, or I don't even want your money. Could you do this and let me do that? It uplifts us. Yelp, another billion dollar company, right? Hey, Yelp, I'm doing X. Would this be helpful for you? Great. Can you do this for me? And now that's getting more into the colder side, Marty, I know of transactional. So we don't mean just like that, right. but the spirit of mutual beneficial, starting with how can we just serve and help each other to mutual benefit. I think that's the key thing, which I've seen more and more. And uh, Ralph as well is that I think even my team, um, even though that is more so, you know, vendor and, and hiring people, just thinking as Ramon's growing more, a company comes to me and this is a made up. He says, Ramon, can you build us a building? Or let me see something more practical. Uh, Ramon, can you do an event with 10,000 people? something more practical, more relevant to the, the situation of the day. Um, I'm not afraid to say yes. Have I done that before? No, but kind of like David and Goliath, you know, he, he got a sheep and got a bear. Ah, I think I can take care of the giant. So with team, with biz dev is what I'm trying to say here in a stumbled way. Marty, you can make me sound smarter. Is that with team, you can scale and do anything with, right. with, with the right team. Right. So I was going to ask you, you, you made some of these references. So, so tell us, uh, use your imagination. So for you right now, describe for us what would be for you and Smart Hustle a really good biz dev partnership. Like you just say, Rocky and I have biz dev leaders. I'm a branding guy. He's a digital marketing guy. This is our biz dev because we have separate businesses that are related. So tell us what you would see for yourself specifically, like with whom would you like to partner? Another media company, uh, a business consultancy firm? What would be good for you? How would you see this as a partner? What would be the objectives and how would you see the outcomes happening for you and them? I will tell you the real life scenario, uh, Marty and Raph, what I would love so much. This is a real life scenario if anybody's listening. I have not yet built the smart hustle community like I want to or like I know it can be done. We already have, and I'm no Gary V or Damon John, I'm Ramon, you know, we're all uh, well known in our own minds, you know, but, <laughs> but speaking realistically, you know, I, I'm not, you know, sometimes, you know, speaking realistically meaning, but I do have some brand, some cachet in a small little world of small business, okay? And there's small business. I have that. And I do have following. Ra I, uh, Rafi follows me, I follow him, we follow each other. We're, I, I have a community, so I have that asset. I haven't yet monetized it or grown it or built the community like I know it could be done is my point. I would love to partner with somebody said, Ramon, great. We'll build a community. We'll help structure it, meaning we'll tell you, Ramon, show up on Wednesday or Ramon, do this. Ramon, give us access to this. We need this content. And maybe they're looking for uh, to sell stuff to people. So I don't know if that makes sense, but I just want a thriving community, engagement level to go high, people chatting and talking on a Monday, sharing their problem, Thursday coffee dates, Saturday smart hustle workout. I don't care. I don't know. I just want to feed my community more. 
and maybe there's a partnership with somebody who knows how to do that, but they don't have access to an audience, if that makes sense. They're right. like, so who would that be? Who, uh, archety uh, archetypally, who would that be? Would it be, say, say, a consulting firm, a media, another media company? Uh, who, who might it Probably be? Probably a coach. I think, that for an example that I can think, a business coach. Who's, yeah, that because the coach would say, Ramon, we'll, we'll be the moderator. We'll post. We'll, we'll tell you, Ramon, Ramon, show up on Thursday, do a live, because, you know, the Ramon brand, Ramon, how you do it. In return, we're going to sell some coaching services, and we'll give you 20%, 10%, 5%. So to me, I get my community. I get the engagement. I get the engines running, growing, yeah, yeah. and they now kind of like, as it were, maybe a Dave Rams, I imagine, not him, but he has this radio show, and it's not a JV, but he has this thriving 299, people are paying for stuff. So is that helpful, what I'm looking for? Hey, so let's go back to the word, to the word that we were using before was authenticity. Yes. And, you know, to sound credible and, and authentic, when you're online, when we're all in the ether and we're all on Zoom and, and everything, I, this is a question to, to both you, Marty and Ramon. How do you create all of these business development uh, communities and relationships with sounding authentic and, and credible and without sounding phony? Mm. Like I get a lot of slack. Oh, Rafi, you're just you, like, I, I will Facebook Live my softball games on Sunday mornings, and people will make fun of me, but I get 10, 20 people to, to watch me on the side because it's just fun for me. It is authentic. I am not selling anything. I'm just having a good time. How do businesses conduct business or create community or do all this stuff with sounding authentic and not sounding phony? Well, I would say that uh, the, the, the way to start is to have a topic or a subject of current interest. So let's just say uh, shifts in management during this COVID period, because everybody's thinking about how do you manage? I just, this is just an example. And so if you find two organizations that can come at that particular subject, let's just say from the HR perspective is one, and then from a management perspective is another. Do you have two organizations providing content, providing talks, uh, providing videos or audios, any kind of content to the same audience? That is a good example of how uh, everybody can win. It's the recipients of the information and the content, as well as the two sponsoring organizations. I like that. And again, sorry for that brief noise in the background. But my, my, I think, one, so thank you, Marty, for that. And one other example I can give, uh, Ralph, is say uh, Red Bull. As an example, I think they do it well. And here's what I see them doing. They're willing to let go. They're willing to experiment. They're willing to do things a bit risky. You, you take a look at the space, uh, the guy who jumped out of space in a parachute or whatever it was, you know, weird stuff like that. Red Bull's all over that. So it seems, I'm not in their corporate, you know, corporate room, but it seems like they're kind of people that say, huh, this probably will fail, but it's big and bold. Let's try it. It's sure it's not quite that risky. So my point being, I think, uh, Raph, one thing I can say about being authentic, um, uh, some of the clients I work with, I'm sure you do, it's that Ramon has its way. Oh, here's an example, Raph. Here's, here's one good example. Um, a, a ERP company, I'll put it that way, ERP company. Um, well, I'll just say it, SAP. Uh, they reached out to me many years ago and said, Ramon, we know you eat burn pancakes and bacon. We want you to host our events. Yes. So my point being, they, they admitted we're this staid, serious company, you know, by our ERP software. I, I mock, I mimic them in, in gentle and honor, you know, kind of how they, they know how they are. You know, they're, everything right. has to be. They know honor. that they're buttoned up. Yeah, buttoned up. And, you know, the whole Mercedes, they come from, you know, it's, everything's timed and perfect. They're like, and the, man, the marketing manager's like, no, guys, we have to break this up. So I think that's an example of, they a little risk. I had parameters, but, but I said, this is who I am. If I can't laugh on your thing, on your thingamajiggy, I we can't work. I'm the same exact way. What, what I'm super curious, super curious about sure. Marty, you have a, you have a background in advertising. You were with the biggest advertising agencies in the world. Yes. Tell me, tell me about the meeting where the young executive came up to the Geico people and oh. said, Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have an Australian accented gecko 
be our spokesperson. Did he get fired? Was he promoted? Or like, tell me about that scene from your imagination. Well, I don't have to imagine because I know the agency. I know the people involved in it personally. All right, tell us the real story. And he was the young guy who got fired for, 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 for uh, uh, recommending the game. That's why Marty's a billionaire right now, by <laughs> the way. He just does these podcasts for fun. <laughs> uh, I was not in the room, but I can tell you that the industry wa uh, it was, was overwhelmed by competition and they were desperate to stand out. And so they, you know, all the traditional methods did not work for, for Geico. So they, uh, somebody said, let's have a, a, a spokes animal. I, I know this because my friend was the copywriter at the agency. So they, and, and lots of companies have spokes animals. You know that, that's fairly standard. So they decided to come up with this, this spokes character was an animal. And so the animal was the, carrying the message, added an element of humor, and, but, the, but was the, the fuel of it was, we're so desperate to get noticed. And that's what a lot of companies do. Now, I don't frankly think that they have done as great a job as they could have done. Affleck, as you know, did the same thing with that duck. Well, Aff Affleck probably wrote on the coattails of Geico. Yeah, and then they had problems because that comedian whose voice they used, Gottfried, Gilbert Gottfried, yeah, he said, let's, he, let's not go there. I'm not discussing. <laughs> but to answer your question, uh, many companies out of desperation to find a way to outplay their much larger competition come up with these outrageous and outlandish schemes. This particular one worked. So and what so, you're no, saying the, is that, the, it, the, that the, it was a risk. It was an enormous risk. And the agency decided to go forward to the client. The client decided to, you know, sort of bite the bullet on that. Uh, the person who developed this became senior vice president at the advertising agency. And can I ask one follow-up question? Do you mind, Raf? It was totally, if I may. Of yeah. course, so of course. Follow up just about what, what you're talking about. Because I'm just curious. What do you think in today now is working more, the humor or the animal? I was just curious because for me, I can recognize meaning. I like, I'm, it, it, they've evolved clearly. I don't know which came first, the gecko or the humor, but I like the humor a bit more now. Like sometimes you can't tell like, um, you know, two guys are walking in the park. One of them turned around and said, huh, water in the sky? Bye gecko. So, you know, that was a poor example, but I like, you know, they have this, you know, two guys are rowing a boat in the middle of the roof of their house or what, it's a gecko commercial. So I was curious, Marty, for you, do you think it's the animal, the humor and the, the stuff they've added to it over the years. Well, I think that, that it, a lot of people say that was a great commercial and I can't remember what the service or product was mm. uh, or any action that they would take. That's a complete failure. So the purpose of, of all of these activities is not to entertain, it's to sell, pure and simple. Mm. If people are, are entertained as a vehicle to remember and to engage with and to inquire about and maybe to buy, that's good but just fun for fun. I think that's where Geico actually in recent years has dropped the ball, frankly, is they're much too much focused on the, the humor and they sort of ignore their own product, or their, their own service that they sell. So mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, I draw a very hard line on this. It's only about, say, it's not creative unless it sells. Got it's it. an old advertising adage. Yeah. So, so we only have a few minutes oh. left. So oh, no, I, I and I just want to put my vote, Rafi, and say, I think the Liberty insurance with the ostrich is a failure. I think it's done, but continue, Rafi, please. We'll talk about the next show. Go All ahead. right. I'm not going to edit that out. So it's there. <laughs> it's there. Um, so just to wrap things up, it, you know, as, as Marty always brings it back to the serious, because I'm the gecko and he's the, he's the duck or the ostrich. I, sort of. Anyway, bringing it back to business development, because we are biz dev leaders. Sure. That, uh, Ramon, I'm with you. Uh, I'm with you, and, and Marty will agree to this. I'm always about the humor and, and, and entertaining people because I believe in balance. I learned this years ago when I started taking yoga and I became macrobiotic. Everything is about balance. Mm. It, Marty, why are you laughing? This is, I'm being serious now. Okay. This I've... is the problem. You're laughing when I'm serious and you're not laughing when I'm making jokes. That's the problem right there. Um, That's funny right there. Okay. Getting back, getting serious, Marty. I believe in the balance between absolutely you need your message to come through in all of your business development. 
in your advertising, in your networking, in all of your business development activities. But you need to do it with a smile. I am, if I can't smile and I can't think happy, positive, fluffy pillows and zen gherkin, all the pickles that you gave me, if I don't have a smile on my face and I'm wearing that buttoned up suit and tie, I'm not having a good time. I might be making money, but I'm not having a good time. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's the balance. So Ramon, I, I'd like for, for us to yeah. summarize in terms of business development, what, where is your balance? How, how do you lean and how do you make things happen? Sure, I think one, each to his own, of course, as Seth Godin is um, to say, we all raise a flag. So Marty has his style. Everybody's not going to like it. That's okay. The world's too big for that. And Raph and myself. But speaking about me now, me personally, uh, I, I do tend to joke a bit too much sometimes. I, I know I do it with my family, and you know, I, but I'm learning. I need to be a bit more mature, and I joke a bit. But for me, it's definitely humor. And I don't, I'm not trying to be it. It's stupid humor. I'm not, I don't think I'm some comedian. It's just it's a natural part. Laugh have fun. How are you? How was your day? The kids, I don't mind dogs barking. You know what? If, the, if there's a spelling error, sorry, Marty, he's advertising spelling error. I'm, see, I, I, I could, I, but that's just me because again, that's how I roll. Going back to the SAP probably was the best example. They saw someone who doesn't take themselves too seriously, laughs fast. I'm going to poke fun at the guy who hired me I'm going to say, you know, so if that is that helpful, but definitely we do serious work, I guess I'll say. I have a great team around me who hopefully takes care of typos, but Ramon, I'm the way I am. I talk a little too fast, probably. I slurve my words every now and then, but the imperfection, I think, is what also brands, they appreciate. It's just how I roll. For me. Yeah, I, I get it. In, in other words, you, you take your work seriously, but you don't take yourself seriously. Absolutely. Correct. I, I just roll. I, I, I also wanted to mention, Marty, just because you have more hair than Ramon and I do, that I think there's an element to the, the less hair that you have, the, probably the funnier you are. <laughs> so I think that's why Ramon and I have gotten along over 20 years, definitely because of our hairstyles. All day, all day. Don't tell them about the private club, though. Don't that, that that's that's yeah. Well, Ooh. They, they, there was hair club for men, and then there was our club. Right, hairless, hairless for men. <laughs> well, now we're getting to the yeah. <laughs> right, Marty. Closing remarks. Anything to tell our audience today? Yeah, listen, we're happy that you're joining us today. Ramon is a favorite of ours. He's a fan favorite in general. We're delighted that you're able to join us, and we look forward to more conversation with you to hear your perspective on the world of business and business development. Ramon, I'm, I'm gonna lead the witness here uh, in, in closing. My favorite segment of, uh, of your last summit was having the 15 year old, what was her name? Michaela, Michaela Omer of, uh, of Me and the Bees Lemonade. Incredible story, it was so inspirational. Yes. So inspirational. Um, I know she's a Dell partner. I, I know she's in Texas. Um, Give us very, a very brief, uh, on the way out the door, yeah, yeah, yeah. give us a very brief uh, story because this is so uplifting and it's a great way to, to go out. Um, a, little, a little bit of her story, how you met her and how, how that all came together and then we'll wrap things up. Yeah, bottom line, there's a young lady named Michaela Ulmer. You can look her name up, U-L-M-E-R, me and the bees. And uh, she was four years old, got stung by a bee. Months later, weeks later, researching about bees and honey and all that good stuff. She said, mom and dad, I want to create a lemonade company. But of course, and now she's what, 15 years old. So 15 minus four. She has a lemonade company selling lemonade in the southern part of the U.S. Dell happens to be a big purchaser and facilitator of that. Um, and they've uh, powered her business. She powers them and makes them look great as well. And But she's as a full business. She's, a, as you said, uh, uh, Raph, awesome lady, full of inspiration. And um, I got to know her. Through Dell, I was at a South by Southwest event. Oh. She was there speaking. We got connected, and uh, we've connected ever since. And her and her family do the business together. So it is a very good story. That, that, that's great. So, so like I said, in closing remarks, what is your, what is your advice, young people, old, sure. older people, entrepreneurs? What is, it, what is your advice how to get through this period now yeah. and then moving forward? Absolutely. I think one of the best things I would say is that as we're looking to grow our businesses, especially I focus on that, not that we don't, can't, don't need to make sales, but I would have people pause, 
pause in trying to sell and seek, how can I help this person? How can I, is there some relationship with this person? And how can both of us start to grow? And I think that's the way closing out as you and Marty's, the spirit of this show is of business development. Right. Sales is important, but if you're just trying to sell, 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 that's a short term. But if you're relationship building, business development building yeah. for the long term, you'll never be impoverished. Very good. All right. So everybody say cheese on the way out. On the way out. Cheese on the way out. And that is a take. And Ramon Ray, thank you so Thanks, much. Ramon. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Raf, for having me. And thank you for all you do for the community. Thank you for being on today's uh, Rafi and Marty show, as I like to call it. It was a pleasure to see yes. you. Yes. I, I, I've been, I was telling Marty for months that we had to have you on. Like okay, 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 okay. But then you were you were busy with the uh, with the summit, and yeah. it was just like, okay, we're finally right. doing it. But thank you so much, Ramon. Let's Ray. be more touch, a uh, ref and Marty. Let's, let's definitely, do it. Definitely. Uh, just, just Ramon, how can people get in touch with you? What is the best way for people to get in touch with you? Sure. Yeah. Two things. We'd love people to go to smarthustle.com. Check it out every Thursday at uh, 2 p.m. I have a, what people say is a cool e email that goes out. So smarthustle.com. And if you want to see more about me, shaved heads, bald heads, whatever it is, even though I'm not bald, I can grow full Afro, RamonRay.com. Okay. All right. Have an awesome day, everyone. And okay. smile on the way out. And